there and welcome to another edition of Did You Know Doctor Who? What you may may not know about Doctor Who. This time we're going to have a look at the second to last Twelfth Doctor story, although to some people this should have been the last Twelfth Doctor story, World Enough and Time slash The Doctor Falls. I hope you enjoy. This is the first televised multi-master story. The origin story for the Cybermen is inspired by Big Finish audiobooks Spare Parts, which also detailed the origins of the Cybermen. This story features the return of the original Mondasian Cybermen since their first ever story, The Tenth Planet. The Master's line comparing Operation Exodus to being more like a Genesis of the Cybermen is a reference to the 1975 Doctor Who story, Genesis of the Daleks, which showed the Fourth Doctor being sent to the creation of the Daleks. In fact, there was meant to have been a story called Genesis of the Cybermen, which never got produced. However, some of the ideas were reused for both spare parts and this story. This is the first time, officially, that the Doctor self-identifies as Doctor Who, although in previous stories other characters have called the Doctor Doctor Who. Interestingly, Operation Exodus was a continual concern for the inhabitants of the Moon Base Alpha in the 1970s TV series Space 1999. There it was an evacuation plan for an orderly transfer of the moon's inhabitants to another location, originally back to Earth, but eventually adapted to any habitable body. When the master unmasks himself, an alarm bell in the background sounds in time with a drumbeat. The drumbeat is also heard when he enters the operating theatre alongside Missy, referring to the sound of drums. For the BBC One premiere of The Doctor Falls, Duncan Newmarch's regular continuity announcement was interrupted by a Mondasian Cyberman, who, after breaking through the door, announced to incensed and sceptical Newsmarch that they would be performing the announcement while he was to be upgraded. Immediately after Newmarch was upgraded, the Cyberman introduced The Doctor Falls. There are several differences with the original Mondasian Cybermen and the Mondasian Cybermen that appears in this story. For example, the original had a larger light on their head, the handlebars did not have earmuffs, and their chest unit was larger and could be used as their weapon. The final segment of the Doctor Falls, where the Twelfth Doctor meets the First Doctor in the snow, was filmed only two weeks before World Enough and Time aired, as part of the filming of the Christmas special. The Doctor's mention of Marinus as a planet on which the Cybermen originated, which is a rare instance of the TV series referring to non-televised material, in this case, the comic The World Shapers. The Doctor Falls removes any contradiction that had previously revolved around the various Cyberman origin stories by having the Doctor call all instances parallel evolution. On original broadcasts on BBC Scotland HD, a technical fault led to a sound problem, which rendered the dialogue inaudible for final five minutes from Bill leaving the TARDIS to the end credits. This is the first season finale in the Revival series and the only episode of Series 10 to feature no scenes on present day Earth, though the final scene takes place on Earth in 1986. As his final story of the series, this means that Peter Capaldi fought the Cybermen in all three of his finales, although one in Hell Bent was a cameo. The title World Enough and Time is from Andrew Marvel's poem to his coy mistress. The Doctor uses Venusian Aikido on George, which the Third Doctor used frequently. Razor's room is reminiscent of the BBC's radiophonic workshop of the 1960s and was actually the recreated version in Cardiff's The Doctor Who Experience. Missy breaks the fourth wall with her tongue-in-cheek joke about the companions being exposition and comedic relief, which refers to common criticism about companions in Doctor Who. In an interview given to Radio Times, Stephen Moffat said that he and Russell T Davies considered pranking incoming showrunner Chris Chibnall by telling him in this story that it would end with Missy being pregnant. The plaid coat worn by Matt Lucas is the same coat worn by Bob Hoskins in the film Outside Bet. This is the second time the Doctor attempts to suppress his regeneration, the first time being the Tenth Doctor. When the Master and Missy are tormenting the Doctor about the possible ways of killing him, they mention that they know he died once by falling. The Fourth Doctor's regeneration was triggered when the Master caused him to fall from a radio telescope. The Master was stranded due to a broken dematerialization circuit. This was the same component that the Time Lords deactivated in order to disable the Third Doctor's TARDIS and exile him to Earth. It was during this period of the exile that the character of the Master was first introduced. Missy tells the Master I loved being you and speaks of her admiration of him, echoing the Tenth Doctor's speech to the Fifth Doctor in the Doctor Who mini-episode Time Crash. 
Disregarding Time Crash and archive footage, this is the first time a classic Doctor appears in Doctor Who and interacts with the current Doctor. And that is it for today, I hope you enjoyed. World Enough and Time, for many people, is the best Peter Capaldi story out there. And whilst I did say a while back that Heaven Sent is probably one of my favourites, if not my favourite of the 12th Doctor era, World Enough and Time managed to basically pass that. I absolutely love these two parters. World Enough and Time and The Doctor Falls is a fantastic finale, even though it technically isn't the finale, which is kind of a shame because the next story isn't as great as these two. But nonetheless, this is a fantastic story. The Cybermen, especially the Mondasian Cybermen, be returning is fantastic. I love the Mondasian Cyberman look. They are probably my favourite Cyberman design. Um, Peter Capaldi's acting is fantastic. There are some brilliant moments, especially when he's yelling at the two masters and saying how, you know, it's because it's fair. It's because, you know, he cares so much about people that he is willing to risk his life and save them, even if he knows that he will die. And it's such a heroic moment. And the music, the music in this episode is absolutely top notch. Like, some people have said that this is, like, almost the perfect finale to Doctor Who as a whole. The way the Doctor dies, giving his life to save so many other people, is absolutely touching, absolutely beautiful in every sense of the word. And honestly, I kind of agree. This is a fantastic final episode, or final story, I should say. It is truly beautiful. And it, you know what? I might as well say this is probably my favourite Peter Capaldi story. This is probably my favourite Twelfth Doctor story. Every time I rewatch it, it still gets great. I love so many scenes in this story, such as when Bill is going through that hospital room and you have this, you know, Cyberman or, well, what's going to become a Cyberman, you know, pressing this button and, you know, she turns up the volume and he's saying pain, pain, pain. And, you know, then she hides and you see a nurse and she can see it and she literally turns it down to mute so she doesn't have to listen to this poor patient crying out for pain um you know it is a truly horrific moment but absolutely fantastic it really sets in the uh tone of why the cybermen are such terrifying monsters and this is a fantastic cyberman story as a whole probably one of the best in the revival era up there with age of steel and uh rise of the cyberman in my opinion because those stories are also really good this one is up there um Probably the best of the Moffat Cyberman stories because I know Moffat loved using Cyberman so much in his stories. Uh, but this one really shows that he could do a Cyberman story that really works, that isn't just dull or boring or just kind of mid. This is definitely a fantastic story and I, I definitely recommend you watch it without a doubt. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Did You Know Doctor Who and I'll see you next time.